Okay, next up we have John Babiars, who's running for Governor of New Hampshire. Thank you. I'm running for Governor, this is my fourth time running. Um, gained a lot of experience during the, the decades runs of uh, my governorship uh, process. Uh, I bring a lot of experience to the table that the other candidates don't have. Um, although I do have several Supreme Court cases, uh, I am not a lawyer. My opponents are lawyers. I'm a fire chief. I'm an uh, emergency medical technician. I've been in engineering. I've designed computer chips in the early 80s. I've ran several different businesses, consulting practices, and uh, greenhouse operations. I'm currently doing farming and researching into uh, alternative energies. I've just recently uh, installed a large panel, uh, solar panel at my house in Grafton, and this is my second house uh, that I had solar. My other house back in the 80s had solar also. So I'm a proponent of uh, being independent in more ways than one, especially energy independence. As governor, I want to make sure all the citizens have the ability to be independent of not only foreign influences, but also influences from the federal government so they can live their lives freely as they see fit. All right, so we'll get into the questions then. Okay. If elected, what will be your highest priority for the state of New Hampshire? My highest priority is to make sure we have a business environment that uh, allows businesses to operate freely with the amount of regulations to ensure uh, consumer protection. The reason why we want business to operate because of, uh, freely is we want businesses to hire people and we want to reduce the burden that businesses have in hiring that employee. Currently we have uh, a lot of oversight from various different agencies. I was talking to a, a farmer last month where uh, Department of Labor heavily weighed on the side of the employee uh, for an injury that was trivial but basically punished the farm operation. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have to have a fair balance in this. We, we have to have people that want to work, encouraged to work, so that uh, our social service systems are not overly burdened. And to do that, we have to have the environment where people can do that without uh, government watching closely over their backs. The other part of that equation is to have a court system that is clean, fair, and transparent. Our court system here in New Hampshire, I would have to say, rates right there with Louisiana. The decisions coming out of the Supreme Court uh, sometimes defy logic and definitely defy the Constitution. We also have a family court system that has no oversight. It's basically a closed system. We don't know, we, if you've been like me, going around the state, for over a decade, you hear some of the hard luck stories, and a lot of that is court imposed. And I think if more people were aware of it, we'd have less incidents like Thomas Ball here in Keene. And I think it's very critical that we as a people have a compassionate court system that listens. And I feel that's not happening right now. We need to change that environment. And that's why I uh, am fully in favor of uh, constitutional amendment uh, question two, which is to have oversight of the court. So that the legislature, when they need to see something, they can sit there, overlook it, and make the proper correction so that the uh, judicial can't go off their merry way. And what is your position on voter IDs for the residents of New Hampshire? I believe each voter should have an ID. That it should be fully free to go to. If they don't have an ID, that they can sign an affidavit so they can still vote. The last thing we want is the our ballot so diffused that it can be tampered with to the point of I have a franchise of a vote that's my most important part of being in society and when my vote doesn't count when my vote is diluted I have a problem with that and I'm one of the few people that the Supreme Court has said in a 2007 decision that my vote does not count and what is your position on medical marijuana? Being an EMT, I see people suffer under pain, especially under such narcotics as oxycontin, oxycodone. Those are terrible, hardcore narcotic drugs. In fact, it has created the, their own black market. And yet I have friends who've gone to jail for marijuana, for pain that they have in their hip, but it solves their problem. 
I've seen people in other aspects of pain. I think it's criminal for this society to use law enforcement for medical issues. And if I was governor, I would have medical marijuana passed with the least amount of restrictions. Would you support a state income tax for the residents of New Hampshire? No, I would not support a state income tax for residents of New Hampshire. To me, it's it's uh, it's a moral issue. If the first nickel I make goes to the government, then I am a slave of government. The first nickel I make should go to me so that I can determine what charities I want to support to help the people I want to help. Now, before somebody accuses me of being a selfish person, I volunteer a lot of my time. I'm a volunteer fire chief, volunteer EMT, I volunteer in the community. I do this because I feel part of the community. But the day that comes when they're gonna, somebody points that invisible gun at me and say, you will give, is the day I stop giving to society. I want my, my efforts to society to be voluntarily, that we engage in voluntary cooperation. When you have somebody force you, it's no longer voluntary, that's an outright theft. And I firmly believe that, and that is a moral issue with me. Great, now we'll open it up to um, questions from the audience. Okay. What do you think of property tax? Is a property tax uh, out of sight in New Hampshire? And what do you do with that? Yes, property, t property taxes are out of sight. But the difference with property tax prior to the state coming up with its stupidest counting gimmick back in 2000 for the property tax, Property taxes were controlled at the local level. It was the responsibilities of the citizen in the local community to decide what they're going to need in their community, and the tax was based on that. Now, also the local community could have circuit breakers for those elderly, uh, for those who had disabilities. I know in my town we passed uh, exemptions for blindness, we passed exemptions for handicap. We do that in the community. The problem when the state with the statewide income tax comes in, it actually violates our Constitution. And the reason it violates our Constitution is because we're all supposed to be uh, assessed every five years and be proportional. Well, if you have one town assessed in one year and another town in another going statewide, how can that be fair and proportional? Because real estate values change. And so this, when the state got involved in it, it really screwed up the system and, just, and it gave little room at the local community. I think what we have to do and realize that I, I prefer a consumption-based tax or user fees, but outside of that, uh, the local community has got to get a handle on their taxes because it's not going to get solved by taking money from somewhere else. Because if we decide to just keep taxing businesses, what's going to happen is businesses are going to leave. And the end result is no matter what you tax a business, the end result is the business will raise their fees and it's a person that buys the product from the business that pays the tax. I think we need to control our spending habits. The bottom 20% in earners in the state of New Hampshire pay 8% in taxes, local and state. The top 20% pay two. An income tax would fix that so everybody would pay the same percentage. Don't you have a problem with us taxing the lowest 20%, the highest? I remember, see, I read history. Here's the problem I have with it. Back when they passed the federal income tax, it was only 1%, and only the rich will pay. You had to make income of $5,000. Well, back then, most people barely made $1,000 a year. Okay, now look, I am now, under those standards, considered wealthy. Let me tell you something. It's just my wife and myself, and we, we live on less than 30000 a year, so. Under the last Republican, Dwight Eisenhower, the tax rate on millionaires was 92% of their last dollar. And as my dad said, who was a businessman, I don't hear them complaining. Now they earn 10 times as much in, in purchasing power and pay zero. And that's also so in New Hampshire. They live in rich communities which have no children and their tax rate on their house is half what it is to the poor guy living in a tenement in a, a city in New Hampshire. That's just the facts. I was wondering if you're in favor of eliminating those exemptions to the elderly in those towns, property tax relief. No, I'm not. Uh, and the reason I'm not for 
eliminate those exemptions because I, I firmly believe that we should pay for the services we use. And the elderly have, over their time, have paid. And the handicapped, uh, they don't have a chance, really, because uh, there are various handicaps. And we as a society, we, we have a way of giving them, quote, a circuit breaker to hold that off. In fact, my town, uh, if you're a long-time resident, and for, because you become poor because of disability, whatever, they will not take your house. But that's a conscious decision the town and the selectmen have made. So. Just normally when you have an exemption for one group, another group has to pick up that cost. And it's usually young families with young children who are least able to pick up the extra property tax that's being put on to them because the town fathers have decided to exempt another population they feel. Well, it's not the town fathers. Well, the people have to vote on it. So the people of the town have agreed to this. Okay. Uh, the other. And, and I understand your, your, your point on cost shifting. We also do that with uh, conservation easements. We also do that with current use. But current use is constitutional. The people of New Hampshire voted into our constitution to have current use. The legislature wrote the laws to implement current use. If we, if we want open environment, then somehow these environments have to be kept open. Uh, David? Hi. Um, I was hoping to ask this to Eddie Cameron. I don't know if it could be a uh, question on this, but um, I was going to ask the same question I asked the last person, and uh, who would you be supporting? And I'm hoping for one single short and sweet reason why you'll be supporting that person. I support Gary Johnson, and the sole reason is we've got to balance our budget, because if we don't balance our budget, bankruptcy is a hard way for a nation to go down. That will hurt the wealthy, the poor, everyone. People who save for future retirements, it will hurt them the most. Because hyperinflation destroys all wealth, destroys all savings, destroys all investments. And if you don't have money for investments, you can't invest in new buildings into the future uh, uh, of your community. Gary, did you have a question? Oh, I'll say it. Right, Daryl. Uh, do you support fair ballot access and what are your uh, proposals if you have any? I do, and um, again, I, I would support anything in the legislature. You have to remember the governor is not a dictator. The governor can only say yay or nay to what the legislature passed. I could encourage them. I could, by telling them what I would find acceptable, and if they pass a bill to me that was acceptable, I would, I would sign it. But the purpose of the governor is to limit the legislature from going overboard on things. Well, what do you so find acceptable and what would you ask them e to I would find acceptable equal access, access for all. I think that's the only proper way to live within the uh, Article 11 of the New Hampshire Constitution. Any further questions? Okay. Running for governor is not an easy task. I think for too long, we looked at the governor as some kind of dictator, some kind of magic emperor or magician that can wave his hand and fix things. I remember running over 12 years ago when the question posed to every candidate for governor, how would you fix the Claremont problem? Well, the problem is the governor can say what he'll pass for a solution, but it's up to the legislature. We had the legislature because of the court edicts to determine what is adequacy. Well, to me, adequacy is not good enough. But they had to come up with some mathematical dollar formula. And I'm, I'm here to say that that dollar formula doesn't apply. You can't, what's the number? 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, pick a number. Sooner or later, it's either gonna be adequate or not, but the point is you have to have a teaching environment, you have to have parental choice in education so that parents can choose what is best for their child, not what is best for the system. And so I'm looking for, as governor, to make sure people have choices in all aspects of their life, because they know how to run their life a lot better than any politician can. Thank you.